to very much Denise. I would like now to give the floor to Dr. Kamana Misra to offer her perspective. Dr. Kamana Misra is a neuroscientist with generative medicine expertise. Please, you have the floor. Um, thank you so much. First of all, to all this wonderful audience, thank you so much for caring. You know, together we are part of this whole journey together, and we need to be with each other and support each other through this. Also, a big shout out to the organizers of this event, uh, because I think opportunities like this bring us all together to really make a difference, you know, in a sustainable growth across the globe. Um, as I was just introduced, I'm a neuroscientist by training uh, and a STEM advocate by passion. I lead the activities of Association for Women in Science, New Jersey chapter. Um, that's not my profession, but that's something I volunteer for because I'm so passionate about it. So. You know, if you look at the society today, each and every one of you here have an opportunity to contribute, right? Uh, and I think I'll start first by uh, putting this quote ahead, uh, which sort of summarizes the experience that we are going through in this gathering. You don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You can make progress by implementing changes and ideas. And that is what we are here to do today. And I hope we can participate together in this. So. The good news is that a lot of us are hearing uh, something about a golden uh, era for women is happening right now in entrepreneurship. And to some extent, that is true. We are seeing numbers that we have never seen in the past uh, sort of jumping out at us, right? Uh, I'm going to read out some of them. It is true that the collective efforts of activists and advocates uh, and feminist movements have made some positive changes in this world. We are at an unprecedented moment in culture the most important time for women in history, as said, you know, it's a quote said by Gloria Steinman. Across the globe, female entrepreneurship is growing. It is growing at a rate of 10% across 51 different economies today, compared to a small number of 5% of growth rate in men entrepreneurs. Yes, you got it right. The rate of women entrepreneurs has been growing at a percentage at least double of the men right now. We know that is true because we were at such a low level that any improvement is really jumping our numbers up to something that we have not seen in the past. So, although men are currently growing, you know, there are more entrepreneurs who are males, we are trying to and we will catch up very soon, I'm sure. <clears throat> so, on the other side, the flip side, as recently, just like one or two days ago, it came out in the 2020 annual report by uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The data is unequivocal. No matter where in the world you are born, your life will be harder if you are born a girl. This is also a reality while we are seeing all these progresses, right? So I feel a window of opportunity has opened for all of us to take some action. But this is a very fleeting, you know, opportunity. And we all need to push hard to uh, take control of this opportunity. The latest World Economic Forum 2020 Gender Gap Report says, estimates a staggering 257 years to close the gap on economic participation of women. 257 years, right? And on another side, it also reveals that gender parity will not be attained for almost next 100 years. Even though we are sitting and talking about the positive changes, what does that mean? None of us will see gender parity in our lifetimes nor likely will many of us younger children. So there is a lot more to achieve. We are doing, we're going the right, right path, but we do need to push a bit harder. Um, and as my colleague earlier was mentioning, you know, science, invention, innovation, are the three different aspects of uh, entrepreneurship. Science is a field where the basic work is happening. And it's a very risky field where most of the money is coming in through federal agencies, right? Because you'd never know what is going to come out of it. And this is the field, this is the riskiest field, but this is a field which has been there for a long time. And there's a lot of intervention by activists. And so you have started observing some positive changes in that field. Now come to the next level, which is invention. Invention is when you invest a little more money into science and try to make it into a product, you know, that goes beyond science. Yes. Invention, it is slightly more riskier, but the amount of effort going in for female, uh, you know, investment in this field is dramatically low. So if you look at the numbers of uh, 
the World Intellectual Property Organization and their latest data shows that only 30% of the international patent applicants have at least one woman inventor in them, right? So it is very good compared to what the number was a few years ago. So this is something to celebrate, not really, you know, but obviously we need to go a lot higher. Now come to the next level, the innovation. Innovation is something when you take the invention, you know, and put in a lot of money into it and to take it to the market into a usable product that the buyers will buy. This is a field where there's a least representation of women entrepreneurs like me, right? Um, in US, I'm talking only of US, despite all the growth today, women leaders are uh, entrepreneur are uh, receiving only 7% of the total venture funds that are available. So as we go to the different nuances of science, we see different levels of uh, improvements in what is happening to female STEM entrepreneurs or female STEM scientists. And I think that is one area we need to focus on. The investors uh, need to look at it at a different manner and try to support women uh, sort of uh, propose uh, growth. A little about AVIS, Association for Women in Science. Uh, we were founded in 1971. It is a leading organization that advocates on behalf of women in STEM. We are committed to advancing women in STEM, sparking innovation, promoting organizational success, and driving systemic changes. Our research shows that there is lack of gender diversity in corporate leadership, in academia, and in the biotech world. And this is preventing long-term success. The STEM industry needs more professional women in leadership to start and strengthen businesses and stim stimulate innovation. It's not only the right thing to do, it is the smartest thing to do. We call on our corporations, academia, and research institutions to partner with us on this mission. The main topics here would be the pay, promotion, and participation. These are the fields that women really lag behind, and we need to work with each other to strengthen the parity in pay, the promotion and participation of them. So coming to the real world aspect of being a scientist who is now trying to go on the entrepreneurial journey, I have seen it all. I have grown up in a developing economy. My early education was in India, right? And I personally never faced any situation where I had any resistance to getting into science. I always got an opportunity to whatever I needed to do. And, you know, I have a few students here from our organization in the audience. I, I hope I can shout out to you. Is Shriya Sadhu here? Or any or the young panelists we saw in the audience earlier? Yes, you? And maybe some, is there a young man here? Oh, Shriya is there because she's, uh, you know, winner of one of the entrepreneurship challenges uh, for young girls at Yale recently. And let's see, a friend here. And may, is there a male guy here? Some, anyone willing to? stand up next to these females. <laughs> so my question is like, when you look at them, is there any difference that you see in one person versus the other to get into the entrepreneurship journey? What would you expect a successful entrepreneur to look like? You have to have a very thick skin because you will get rebuffed a lot, whether you are a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. But in a nutshell, what I need, I'm trying to say is we are all equipped to take this journey we all have the skills to do it, but sometimes we don't have the best supportive environment to do it. And I think it should be our mission to work on this and help each other go this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kamala, for your presentation. I would like uh, to give the floor now to Dr. Daniel Stodilka, Senior Fellow Canadian International Council. She is a chemist and an independent science policy analyst. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Ambassador.